So the war in Ukraine is likely to be a centerpiece of tonight's speech by Joe Biden. What he probably won't mention is that shortly after the war broke out, a war that has basically destroyed the nation of Ukraine he claims to care about, both Ukraine and Russia signified they were open to a negotiated ceasefire and came very close to it. But apparently the Biden administration prevented that. How do we know? Well, because the former prime minister of Israel, Naftali Bennett, just said the West, meaning the Biden administration, blocked a truce in order to, quote, keep striking Putin. This seems like a huge story from a reliable source. Tulsi Gabbard is a former presidential candidate we thought we'd check in with on this story. Tulsi Gabbard, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, so I, I have no idea why the former prime minister of Israel admitted this in public. I'm so grateful that he did. How yes. can Biden... How can the New York Times, the Washington Post, how can all the cheerleaders for this refuse to acknowledge this fact? This is huge. We could have prevented this. Our leaders, those in power, could have prevented this, and they didn't. And the fact that it's not being widely reported is incredibly revealing, and it just shows they never really cared about the Ukrainian people. They never really right. cared about the American people or democracy or freedom, all these other things that we hear them giving so much lip service to. It reveals what they've really wanted all along, which is to overthrow the Putin regime. And they saw this war as an opportunity that would help them achieve that goal. And, and it's disgusting to, to know that, that this is true. The, the thing is, Tucker, you and I both know, with regime change wars, no one can predict how they'll end up or what happens next or who's going to take over. But we do know with Russia, because they've already, you know, the writing is on the wall, we do know that in Russia it's not going to be some you know, a pro-Western or, or pro-democracy, uh, you know, power that goes and takes over. It's going to be someone that is far more hawkish and far more dangerous, creating a greater threat for the United States. Uh, the only way that this war ends is through a negotiated outcome. So unless something radical changes, something major changes, unfortunately, what we, the American people, will see, what the Ukrainian people will see, people in the world, is that this will continue to escalate pushing us closer to a direct conflict between the United States, NATO, and Russia. And we've talked about where that could potentially lead. More dangerous weapons, more countries involved, and increasing that risk of a potential nuclear war. It's so reckless and crazy, it's also completely beyond our control, that this war for democracy has never involved a referendum. People are not allowed to vote on this. Most people are against it, but because they're so for democracy, they won't allow the vote. But I'm, I'm really trying to find, since I think this is going to happen, regardless of what you and I say, how does the U.S. conceivably benefit from this? Is there any benefit that you can see? Well, we, we know who is profiting from this. You know, we, we, the, the Biden administration and these pro-war Republicans and Democrats in Congress, are they've sent over $100 billion of our taxpayer dollars over to fund and escalate this proxy war against Russia uh, through Ukraine. There's a lot of military industrial complex companies that are profiting off of this. And I know there are a lot of folks, as we've seen in other regime change wars in the past, who are licking their chops, looking at the money that they will make in going in to try to rebuild these war-torn countries. But the people who are losing are the people of Ukraine, the people here in the United States. And if this goes on, there will more, more and more people be suffering uh, more and more destruction uh, around the world, in Europe and around the world. Yeah. If Americans supported this, the Pentagon probably wouldn't be having recruitment shortfalls, I would think. Just a guess. That's a very good point. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard, great to see you. Thank you. Thank you.